In their initial form, the United States of America exists since 1783, with the help of France, they acquired their independence during the long American Revolutionary War, which, after eight years, in the existence of British America, an ensemble of 13 colonies governed by Great Britain from 1607 to 1783. What does it imply? That, until the end of the 18th century, American colonists are highly dependent on their mother countries, mainly Great Britain, France and Spain, including for printing, but not totally. Giovanni Paoli, the first generalist printer in the Americas, originally coming from Italy, establishes a printing house in Mexico in 1539. He prints some dozens of books and, amongst them, in 1546, a book of spiritual songs. It is not said if this book contains sheet music or only lyrics, though. In North America, the first publishing house is created in 1639, in Cambridge, Massachusetts. And in 1640, a Psalter is printed there. The Basom book. It is actually the first book printed in America. It was not printed by professional typographers and, therefore, contains errors. How did this work happen? Actually, Joseph Glover, a Puritan pastor, decides to leave London to reach Cambridge and launch a printing business there. He partly raises money amongst friends staying in Great Britain and the Netherlands to buy a printing machine. He pays the rest. Finally, he hires a locksmith, Stephen Day to do the future printing work. With his wife, Elizabeth, the locksmith and several other persons, Glover leaves London. Unhappily, he dies during the travel, yet his wife, with the help of Day, establishes the printing house, which becomes active within the 13 colonies of British America. As psalms are sung, the Basom book is obviously a music book, however, it contains no sheet music, for two reasons. The first cause is that the worshippers are supposed to know the songs all by heart. The second motive is that the settlers, present in Massachusetts from the beginning of the century, brought with them psalters printed in Europe, like the Ainsworth Psalter, manufactured in the Netherlands in 1612. Basom book knows numerous reprints. The ninth edition includes for the first time the sheet music associated to the spiritual songs. Two printers must be credited for this work, Bartholomew Green, born in Cambridge and installed in Boston, and his associate, John Allen. Several specialists say that the sheet music were printed with woodblocks, others talk about copper plates. What everyone can see is that all the sheet music appear at the end of the book after the texts of the various psalms and a table of contents. Only 14 psalms have an associated sheet music. The first ones are Psalms 4, 69, 23 and 73. Thus they are not classified in order. Each sheet music of course contains staves made of five lines, but the notes heads are still lozenged ones, like those contained in European 16th century sheet music, even if several ones may be longer. The average sheet music printed in the book is short, containing tunes written on four lines of staves. These tunes have different geographical origins which give them their title. The first one is said to be an Oxford tune, the second one a Lichtfield tune, etc. Sometimes, the title of the tune is just a reference to a specific saint. A certain number of the tunes also contain printed textual data related to the musical content. For instance, a tune is said to be a Cambridge short tune. The three last tunes have no real title, they just give a musical indication, first meter, another tune mentioning second meter. These data are, as their name say it, related to the metrical structure of the tune. The Basom book is the first sheet music book printed in America. But, of course, as the collections of sheet music shared by the Library of Congress still show it, Numerous music books traveled by boat from Europe to the United States. The most ancient one is a book printed in a Benedictine monastery during the 10th century. Let us notice here that the first piece of secular music composed by an American-born composer, My Days Have Been So Wondrous Free, was written by hand in 1759 by a friend of George Washington named Francis Hopkinson who will co-sign the Declaration of Independence in 1776. Francis Hopkinson is a prolific composer who notably wrote seven songs for the harpsichord of forte piano, 
originally dedicated to George Washington, but the first printed music book containing songs composed in America is Urania, a book of sacred music printed in 1761 by a Princeton graduate, the publisher James Lyon. James Lyon himself could have been one of the composers. Though it contains tunes composed in Europe, and its music is dedicated to the military glory of Great Britain, various psalters, with or without corresponding sheet music, are printed. For instance Songs of America, published in 1766 by Josiah Flagg and which includes the first sacred compositions written by composers born in America. In 1770, the New England Psalm Singer is published in Boston, printed by Gill and Eads. It contains hymns which are all written by William Billings and, therefore, it is the first book of sacred music entirely composed by a composer born in America. Its title mentions that it contains music never published before. It is made of more than 150 pages and contains pieces of music theory. Its musical content is thus much more complex than the tunes contained in the Basom book. An original edition shows that the musical notes of the sheet music are rounded and that musical information were written between the staves. A book entitled The American Singing Book printed in 1775 by Daniel Reed, contains sheet music composed by the first American composers seen as classical composers, notably William Billings, Supply Belcher, Jeremiah Ingalls and Daniel Reed himself, all of them living in different towns located in Massachusetts, while being part of a same movement named First New England School, known for the composition of numerous a cappella hymns sung on elementary folk airs. The First New England School mainly composed of self-taught musicians, developed a new musical style, nearly independent of any European influence. They mainly wrote compositions for the sacred music choirs they were involved in. The American Singing Book, printed in Connecticut, where Daniel Reed had moved, knew five reprints during the years following its publication. One of the tunes contained in the book, Wyndham, composed by Reed shows rounded head notes and these notes have the rhythmic values that we are used to see today. During the decades preceding the Independence War, the first patriotic songs lyrics are written, associated to English tunes, in response to tragic events. Some of them are printed, like the Liberty Song, using an air named The Heart of Oak and published in 1768. The first significant American military tune is written in 1775 by Sylvanus Ripley. Its title, Bunker Hill, commemorates a battle. It is first printed on a board sheet. The Independence War has begun. Until its end, various music booklets are printed, containing the first American military music, sometimes mixed with sacred music, like in the Chorister's Companion, printed in 1783. It contains amongst others, Virginia, composed by a certain Oliver Brown. After the war, this type of publications stays popular. For instance, a booklet named Federal Harmony, published in 1790, includes a piece named Montgomery, by Justin Morgan. Its original edition shows that the sheet music notes is a mix of rounded, squared and triangle notes and that the staves are followed by corresponding lyrics. We must of course mention here the Star Spangled Banner, composed in 1773 and which is the national hymn of the United States since 1889. However, the most ancient sheet music conserved until nowadays was printed much later, in 1814. Its author, John Stafford Smith, was actually a British composer. But happily, music may travel thaw out frontiers as it was the case for numerous Irish and Scottish folk tunes played in America until today. Actually, the first conserved exemplary of the Star Spangled Banner's sheet music is printed in 1814, two years after the bombardment of an American fort in Baltimore by British troops. At this time, the Independence War is thus not really totally finished. The printer, Thomas Carr, installed in Baltimore, prints thousand copies of the sheet music. Later, in 1821, he makes a reprint which mentions the bombardment and which is embellished with an illustration in the header and which evokes the presentation of the sheet music books printed from music teachers. The musical 19th century is now running which, happily, will not exclude the insertion of non-American composers in the musical history of the country. For instance, in 1791, a composer born in Denmark, Hans Graham, writes the death song of an Indian chief, 
which is said to be the first orchestral sheet music published in the United States. But the main American sheet music publishers will appear during the 20th century, developing the industry throughout the Dedaces, following technological progress. Before examining their work, we must go back to Germany which, during the 18th century, produces main European publishers still active today. See you soon on this channel. Meanwhile, as you are a sheet music industry professional, we would like to draw your attention to the existence of the Y Music search engine, which analyzes music using musical criteria based on the content of almost 40,000 pieces of music listed in the Y Music database. Today, music listeners listen to more music in a single year than their 17th century ancestors during their entire existence. However, Online music services ask their users to have a specific query in mind when entering keywords, such as a title. Due to these language limitations, there is a gap between listeners' expectations and what they receive, in terms of musical content. It is not enough to type the word inspiring to receive as the first search result a piece of music that will automatically inspire us. This is even more obvious in a general search engine. If a user writes, in the search box, what are musical pieces similar to the Rite of Spring by Stravinsky, the results include links to different interpretations of the title, pages devoted to Stravinsky's life or to his work. However, no title similar to the Rite of Spring at the musical level is mentioned directly in the results and no link to listen to this similar music is provided. Everything must still be done. Idem for your favorite music. This means that listeners do not receive an answer to their original question. Neither general search engines, nor streaming services, are programmed either to analyze the musical content of a title and provide the results to the user or to establish direct musical relationships between different pieces of music. This is not their function, but it is the project of the Y Music team. We are passionate about our mission, which is to create a technological innovation in the field of music which aims to help all music listeners to understand it in more depth. Developed by a computer engineer recognized for his expertise in the music software industry, Y Music is more than an algorithm that searches for chords or melodies. It is the first musical search engine in the full sense of the term. Together, let us reinforce the achievements of technological evolution in the field of sheet music and allow it, allow us, to go further in our research. We invite you to test Y Music on our website.